G'day! Welcome to another curriculum burst. Here's a juicy problem from grade 12. It looks innocent at first, but we'll see. It sort of unravels into some, some quite hairy stuff. Here goes. The arithmetic mean of two distinct positive integers x and y is a two-digit number. Okay? The geometric mean of x and y is obtained by reversing the digits of the arithmetic mean. What's the absolute value of the difference of these two numbers? Okay, okay. I feel like I can handle a piece of that question. I mean, the arithmetic mean of two numbers I know is going to be their sum divided by two. And we're told that's a two-digit number, so it's 45 or 63 or 78 or something. But I want to see if I can write that in sort of abstract sense. This equals a two-digit number. Well, every two-digit number, like 73, is 7 times 10 plus 3. It's actually two single digits, so I could write it as 10a plus b, a single digit times 10 plus another single digit. So that's a nice way to express a two-digit number. So x plus y over 2 is 10a plus b. Carrying on, the geometric mean of x and y. So I guess we need to know that the geometric mean is the square root of the product of the two numbers, namely that's the side length of a square with the same area as the rectangle of dimensions x by y. That's the Greek way of thinking of geometric mean. And we're told that's the reverse of the two-digit number that's given by the arithmetic mean. So it's this answer again, but with the digits a and b reversed. So it must be 10b plus a. And then we're asked to do something with the absolute difference of the absolute value. I mean, sorry, the absolute value of the difference of the two terms. All right, what am I going to do? I don't have any sense of what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have to just try stuff out and hope for the best. That's actually strategy number one. Engage in successful flailing. It might lead to some false paths along the way. That's okay. Su success comes from trying all sorts of things and seeing where, where you can go. All right, what can I do? Well, it feels absolutely compelling to double this equation. So to write it as x plus y equals, what, 20a plus 2b. That just feels compelling. It also feels compelling to get rid of the square roots. So let me square this equation and write x times y is... 10b plus a squared, so it's 100 what, b squared plus 20ab plus a squared. Don't know if it's helping, I'm just doing something. Ooh, this absolute value. Uh, okay, okay. From my experience in reading the history of mathematics, I know that absolute values gave mathematicians a very hard time during the 1700s and 1800s, especially in statistics, because it's all about trying to find the deviations from the mean and so forth. And if you're trying to work with absolute values all the time, they're a nightmare in math. Absolute values are very awkward. So what people started doing says, look, we want positive numbers. Another way to get positive numbers is to square things. Work with the number squared instead. And then you always get back to the absolute value by then taking square roots to the end. So let's do the same thing here. So I'm guided by my understanding of the history of mathematics to say, let's not work with the absolute value directly. Let's work with it squared, which is means I'm going to have to work with x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Oh, 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 xy. I have a formula for xy. There it is. And I've got x squared plus y squared. Let's see if I can get a formula for that guy. Don't know where I'm going. Might turn out to be a false lead, but let's try it. In fact, I can get a form for x squared plus y squared by squaring this, this formula at the very top. So let's do that. Square the left-hand side gives me x squared plus, what, 2xy plus y squared. Back to xy's again. A hmm, little irritating. Equals this guy squared. 400a squared plus, uh, what's that going to be? 80ab plus 4b squared. All right. Uh, so I'm not writing over my face. Let me bring this work over here. Uh, x squared plus y squared will actually be all this 400a squared plus 80, whoops, 80ab plus 4b squared minus the 2xy minus double that formula minus 200b squared minus 40ab minus 4a squared. Uh, let me collect some terms here. So we've got 400a squared minus 4a squared. That's a uh, 3. 2a squared. Oh, oh, I'm glad I caught myself. Doubling, 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 doubling. Yep, double. 400 minus 2a squared is 398a squared. Uh, what was going on with the ab's? I've got plus 40 ab's and I've got negative 196b squared. My handwriting is atrocious. I'm cramming it there, but I think I've got the numbers in my head at least. Uh, that's x squared plus y squared, and I've lost track of what we're we doing. Oh, we're doing the absolute value of x minus y squared. That's x squared plus y squared. Got it. Minus 2 of these xy's. Ah, Alright, so x minus y squared is this formula minus double that formula again. Here goes. 
398a squared minus double a squared. That's going to be 396a squared. 40abs minus double 20abs. Cancel out perfectly. That's feeling good. And then what? Negative 196b squared minus 100b squared. Uh, ooh, what's going on there? Do I like that? Minus, oh, minus 200b squared. I'm doubling. Double, double, double. Oh, that's ridiculous. 396b squared. This is feeling good. x minus y squared is 396a squared minus b squared. That feels too good to not be useful. All right. All right, what's it saying? Don't know what to do, though. Um, hmm. Well, my strategy is flail. Do something. Go for it. a squared minus b squared. That, we know, is a difference of two squares. a minus b times a plus b. 396. Look, I've got something squared equals something times something times something. All this stuff better have squares involved in it. Is a perfect square equals a product of things. And what about 396? Can I make sense of it? Well, it's definitely 4 times, what, 99? Times a minus b times a plus b. 99 is x minus y squared is 4 times 9 times 11 times a minus b times a plus b. Still don't know if I'm doing anything worthwhile, just playing. Ah, but look, a perfect square equals 4, that's already a perfect square, good, times 9, already a perfect square, times stuff. 11 is prime. One of these other products, I need 11 squared at the very least to get a perfect square on the left, has to have 11 in it. That is feeling good. One of these numbers has to be a multiple of 11. And don't forget, A and B are single digits. They're either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. I bet I can now go through a whole series of cases of all the possible values of A and B where either their differences are multiple of 11, probably actually 11 itself, I don't think I can get to 22 or 33, or their, pro their sum is of multiple of 11. I feel there's hope in this question now. I still feel like it's a lot of work go through a whole bunch of cases, but I bet I can start identifying cases of what are the possible allowable digits for A and B, and if luck has it, only one of them actually works out perfectly to make this problem fall into place. In which case, I guess I know what the absolute value is going to be, I'll know what this guy is, take the square roots, I'll have it done. So, keep going, try this for yourself, see if this does actually lead to something worthwhile and successful. And then when you're stuck or have success, Check what I've done in my essay that goes with this video. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.